Welcome to Introduction to Accounting, Preparing for a User's Perspective, Preparing Single Step and Multi-Step Income Statements. The income statement is one of the general purpose financial statements. It is also known as a Statement of Operations or a Profit and Loss Account and indicates a business's profitability for a specific period of time. This topic will help you see how a properly prepared income statement can help debt and equity financiers better understand a company's financial strengths and weaknesses. In general, income statements provide revenue and expense information for a period of time, such as for a whole year, a quarter, a month, or any other time frame that the company wants to present. The summarized income statement equation is net income equals revenues minus expenses. The net income that a company earns must either be paid out to the owners or retained in the business on behalf of the owners. Income retained in sole proprietorships or partnerships will be retained in accounts called capital. Income retained in corporations, rather than being paid out as dividends to shareholders, will be retained in an account called retained earnings. The statement of retained earnings equation is beginning retained earnings plus net income or minus net loss minus dividends equals ending retained earnings. This topic introduces two formats for the income statement, a single step income statement and a multi-step income statement. Here's a simplified version of a single step income statement. It is called a single step income statement because net income is computed in one single step. Total revenues less total expenses equals net income. This sample income statement covers a period of one full year ended December 31st, 20X1. But depending on what the statement users need, management can prepare an income statement for any period users want. I once had a client that, due to a sale of one of its subsidiaries, had to prepare, and I had to audit, an income statement that covered a period of only 17 days. When you prepare a single step income statement, make sure you title it properly with the name of the company, the name of the statement, i.e. income statement, the period covered by the statement, and then list all revenue accounts and total them up, list all expense accounts and total them up, and then in one single step, take total revenues less total expenses to arrive at net income. Let's see if you can create a single step income statement on your own. Please get out a piece of paper and see if you can use the following revenue and expense information for Candy Store Company below to create a single step income statement for the year ended December 31st, X1. Hint, it really will improve your learning if you will write it out on a piece of paper before looking at the solution that follows. Let's look at the solution below to see how you did. Candy Store's owners should know that their store was profitable in that it earned $33 of net income. The owners will now have to decide whether to retain the net income in the business in their retained earnings account or to pay it out to themselves as a dividend. Although the single step income statement does indicate whether a company was profitable or not, it doesn't highlight other key operational results of the business that users want to know, such as the company's ability to sell its product for more than its cost, gross margin, generate positive income from its core operations, operating income, generate income before taxes, income before taxes. To resolve these deficiencies of the single step income statement, company management often provides a multi-step income statement as noted below. The earnings per share, EPS figure, provided at the bottom of the income statement is one of the most important numbers in the financial world and must be disclosed on the income statement of publicly traded companies. It is computed as net income divided by average shares outstanding during the period. In this example, I assume that 1,000 shares were outstanding for the whole year, $33 of net income divided by 1,000 average shares outstanding. Investors track this number very closely because it indicates how much profit the business has generated in relation to each share held by its investors. Investors use a business's current EPS and their own forecasted EPS to compute how much they might be willing to pay to invest in a single share in the business. Here's some key benefits of the multi-step income statement. One, it indicates that the company was able to sell its product for more than its cost, gross margin. The candy store's gross margin of $70 is positive. This is a clear indication that it was able to sell its product at a price, sales revenue, greater than its cost, cost of goods sold. Two, it shows that the company was able to generate positive income from its core operations, operating income. The candy store's operating income of $41 is positive. 
this is a clear indication that its gross margin was more than enough to cover its basic operating expenses of wages, rent, utilities, and advertising, and still have some positive income from its core operations left over. Three, it indicates that the company is able to generate income before taxes. The candy store's income before taxes of $43 is positive. This is a clear indication the company has been able to successfully generate profits, some of which will need to be paid to the government in the form of income taxes. A company's income before taxes helps users assess management's ability to generate profits before having to worry about its tax obligations to the government, which obligations tend to be out of the personal control of a company's day-to-day -day management. Here are the common revenue accounts that you should know and use throughout this course. Sales revenue, rent revenue, and interest revenue. Sales revenue is part of a company's core operations and will be used to compute gross margin. On the other hand, rent revenue and interest revenue are considered to be below the line items because they are not normally part of a company's core operations. However, if this were the income statement of a landlord, rent revenue would be part of the company's core operations and would appear above the line. If this were a bank, interest revenue would also be above the line and would be used to compute operating income. When revenues are not considered to be part of a company's core operations, they will appear below the line in other revenues. You should learn these account names and recognize that they are all revenues that will be added to arrive at net income on the income statement. The primary expense accounts that we will use throughout this course are as follows. Cost of goods sold, operating expenses, interest expense, income tax expense. Interest expense and income tax expense are not operating expenses. They are below the line deductions that do not impact a company's operating income. Interest expense is classified as an other expense. In summary, the math supporting the income statement clearly shows that if a business's revenues exceed its expenses, the business will report positive net income. However, if a business's expenses exceed its revenues, then it will report a net loss. Accountants often use parentheses rather than negative symbols to indicate negative amounts or deductions. Businesses that are able to consistently increase their net income year after year tend to be healthy and vibrant, resulting in increased stock values, an increased ability to pay dividends, and an increased ability to service additional debt. Through proper use of an income statement, a creditor or an investor can understand how a business was able to generate its net income. Even better, with proper analysis and a comparative income statement to be discussed in the next topic, a creditor or an investor can use the income statement to help forecast the business's future profits. Detailed income statement analysis, coupled with an analysis of the balance sheet, statement of shareholder equity, and statement of cash flows, and related footnote disclosures, as well as a review of economic trend data, consumer preference data, and other business data, can all serve to help creditors and investors predict the likelihood of being repaid on loans, having their stock values increase, or receiving dividends. By now you should be able to create a single step income statement and a multi-step income statement. You should also be able to read these income statements focusing on key pieces of information such as net sales revenues, gross margin, operating income, income before taxes, and net income. In the next topic, we will analyze the income statement a little further.